Past leaders have failed to unite Nigeria, says former President Goodluck Jonathan. And Serap has sued INEC over failure to register 7 million voters. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. Former President Goodluck Jonathan has blamed past leaders for not doing enough to unite the country. He said Nigeria's founding fathers, including former premiers of the western, northern and eastern region, Obafemi Awolowo, Amadu Belo and Namdi Ezekiwe, never had nationalistic views but were focused on regional development. The ex-president noted that the uh, present crop of leaders inherited a country that was already divided into three regions and later four. Well, joining us to discuss this is Ambrose Igboke. He's a public affairs analyst. It's good to have you join us, Mr. Igboke. Can you hear me? Thank you very much for having me. I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, great. Let's start by examining what uh, the former president is talking about, because you see, um, uh, there is that thing that we always say about, you know, there's um, unity in eye diversity, but uh, in reality, um, is that diversity unifying us or is it further dividing us? Well, uh, first of all, I would say the president is correct, is right, uh, because the ex-president is right with us. One, Nigeria was a country of uh, independent uh, kingdoms before the British colonialists came. We had the Oyo Kingdom, uh, we had the Bini Kingdom, uh, we had the Opobo Kingdom, uh, we had, um, you know, kingdoms like the uh, Zazo Kingdom that was, uh, remember the popular Penamina, who was a very strong leader in the uh, 15th century. Um, then in the East, where we didn't have uh, large kingdoms, we had settlements where we were ruled by chiefs. Every small kingdom like Henry and uh, some other kingdoms existed. So uh, Igala had the Ata, the Obong of Kalaba was there, the judge of Opobo. No, we had strong kingdoms that were independent. And these kingdoms were actually trading with international partners. For example, the Bini Kingdom had trade partnership with the Portuguese as uh, early as 600 years ago. Also, the Oyo Empire had tradings with, uh, the, uh, with the Middle East, with the Arabs, uh, for a very long time. And so we, we had kingdoms that existed on its own. And in the north and the south of the country, they existed. Then just uh, one day, uh, a man called Frederick Lord Lugard, who was sent to you know, govern the protectorate, they used to call them protectorate of southern and northern Nigeria, woke up on January 1st, 1914, and said that uh, for the uh, convenience of his administration, that is merging the north and south of Nigeria together. And he brought them together, merging the northern and southern protectorates, and called it Nigeria. First was declared uh, the one. And you know, other kingdoms were treated you know, separately until in 1897, uh, the Benin Kingdom was attacked by the British where the last sovereign king, who was Oba Obaram Wenogbaise, was overthrown by the firepower of the British. So since that time, they exiled the judge of Opobu, who resisted uh, their rules, and that is how they decimated the kingdoms. So this man woke up January 1st, 1914, and said they wanted to emerge the two protectorates, and that is, and named them Nigeria, uh, which was a name he was given by a foreigner. So first of all, the name Nigeria did not emanate from Nigerians. It has no, uh, you know, from any language that we speak. It was just uh, an experiment by a, a British, uh, you know, civil servant who was sent to govern the protectorate. And so it has been like that. And over the years, our forefathers who fought for our independence, our uh, statesmen, from Herbert Macaulay to Ernest Coley to... 
awolowo to nam the aziki we to amado belo ta ko abalewa and and enahoro and so enahoro and the rest they understood the fact that we are diverse they understood the fact that we are different they understood the fact that we have our separate identities and those identities were respected i remember that even as far back as 1948 the reverend awolowo wrote in his uh, was uh, in a, his uh, tribune newspaper that uh, nigeria is a mere geographical expression and uh, that is not a nation nationhood is a people that have homogeneity in culture homogeneity in tradition homogeneity in values and homogeneity in culture so these are the things that make up nationhood most of them speak one language that was from nationhood but nigeria's experiment because it was the nationhood was first on these uh, various entities that were independent that were independent they came together in 1960 to form a country mm. but in respect to the diversity that existed before the independence of 1960 they said okay each region was not regions three regions were created to take care of those entities those uh, unique entities that existed although they were still lumped together but they were able to have some unique identities among them so we had the northern region we had the western region and we had the eastern region then some few years later a uh, midwestern region was created i think six years later so yeah. these are to take care of the identities of those people and nigeria was more healthy when it was operating regional system than now that is operating a unitary system Remember, between 1960 to 1966, where we practice regional, where we have regional government, regional governments were competing among themselves, healthy competition. Remember, by, by 1960, UN had created the first indigenous university, yes. and then by 1962-63, we already have universities of Lagos springing up, Ife was springing up, Amadebelo was springing up, and then, you know, everybody was trying to compete wholly. Granot was going on at high and skin in the north, uh, palm oil was going on here in the, in the east, and then cocoa was moving in the, in the west. So the economy of each region was being competition so that they will not lag behind. And that was to witness, and that was what the country prospered. And that's where the country, where that was the glorious age of Nigeria, where nationhood was addressed. First and foremost, we are, we are Nigerians. But again, in terms of economic growth, we took it from the regions, and the regions paid tax to the center. And we had, so we had strong regions. Mm. Unlike then, in, uh, after the 16th, uh, 15th January 1966 school, uh, somebody like uh, Aguri Uronsi, you know, provocated the unitary decree, and then collapsed everything, and started creating states. And by 1967, they have created 12 states. And that is where Nigeria, started having a very weak uh, federating unit and a very strong center. And that is why to today we have really, really, you know, gone down the, gone down the precipice because of that change. So I will agree with President Goodlock Jonathan that our people, our, uh, this, our uh, first political actors promoted region more strongly, but they, were nation, they promoted the nation because through the regions, the nation was the Nigerian nation was able to be stronger in terms of economics. So that where we disagree is that he said they didn't promote nationhood. They promoted nationhood. The Zika of Africa was traveling everywhere, talking about nationhood. Sadano Sokoto was telling Zik then that look, let us understand our differences. When Zik was saying, let us forget our differences. So mm. we cannot forget our differences because we are different. Okay. The Sadana was saying, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious to come in there. Now that you have said that it's, you agree with former President Goodluck Jonathan, it seems more like we've jettisoned that idea of nationhood, even though we still say that we are a nation. What do we do now? Because it's about solutions. Goodluck Jonathan has clearly stated that, you know, the legacy of nationhood uh, and roots of unity were weak, even at the, you know, Nigeria's independence. How do we strengthen it? Because I have sat in a room with several people, leaders of thought, who have also said that, um, who have said that um, one way or the other, politicians are the ones who are responsible for the divisions that we are facing as a people.
Because I don't know which Nigerian would say they're Nigerian first before they start asking you about your indigen, where you're from, are you an indigen or you're non-indigen? So where do we start in solving the problems if we have said this is where we started nationhood from and this is where we are right now? How do we retrace our steps? And do we have leaders who are able well, to for rebuild now, Nigeria that? is operating more. Nigeria is operating more as a country, not a nation. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, there seems not to be homogeneous uh, uh, focus on how we are going as a nation. So the first thing to start with is, let's take a cue from other African countries, for example. All other African countries that were received British names, most of them have changed them, especially in West Africa. Uh, the British, just like Loluga are called here in Nigeria, the British called it Gold Coast. After independence, they changed it to Ghana. Uh, we had the upper voter. After independence, they changed it to Burkina Faso. We had the uh, Rhodesia. After independence, they changed it to Zimbabwe. And so many other countries like that, where they had changed their name. We had uh, another country, they changed it to Zaye. I've forgotten the name they used to call it. They changed it to Zaye. So what are we talking about? First of all, that is where to start. We don't have a sense of nationhood because this name, first of all, was imposed on us. Having said that, the next thing to do is, first of all, what is the, we don't have any indigenous national language that would give us that sense of nationhood. We don't have it yet. Therefore, we just speak but is the it, English. But isn't that, what is isn't that one Lingua of the problems that we have? English. Isn't that one of the problems that we have? Because I, I appreciate the fact that, you know, you're making reference to other countries. The likes of Burkina Faso, the likes of Cameroon, they all speak the same language. They speak the same language. Um, in Nigeria, we have so many languages. The languages are, I mean, we have over 500 indigenous languages. And when it comes down to picking which one would be a national language, politics, of course, comes to play. And we might just be going around in circles for a long time. So isn't that one of the problems where we all even can't as much as make a decision as to which language should be national? So we have three major languages, Igbo, Hausa, and Yoruba. Um, if we decided today that we're going to pick a national language, which would it be? Well, first of all, uh, linguistics, those who study linguistics will tell you that linguistics evolve. Linguistics can also be created. Uh, linguistics can be merged. That is why you hear languages, some attempts some, uh, in some languages sound alike. So uh, when you check etymologies of language, of etymologies of words, you find out that there are root words that came out from different places and then coming to mean almost basically the same thing. So if we had it as a, a you know, as an assignment that we took as a nation seriously to vote independence, by now we would have been able to cover as a national language. We can create one through the, a, a, you know, a, a, a mixture of the various three in the, the, the major languages, as we have said, and we can create a language out of it. Some countries have done it. You can actually create a language from what you have and teach it. And over the years, it will be, become a language. So it is not rocket science, actually. Languages are developed. Mm. So that is one area also. First of all, let's even begin by changing the name from that to see whether we can get a name that is indigenous. We can couch it, we can form it. The other one also is that our forefathers recognized the fact because of our diversity, there is need to have some sense of commonality, some sense of belonging. And that is why they ensure that there is a balance always in terms of political balance, in terms of religious balance, in terms of cultural balance. That in the last seven or eight years have been thrown into the, uh, to the dustbin. That is also why a lot of people are becoming disenchanted now that is awarely belonging to the same nation. So those are the questions we need also need to answer. The other one is that a situation where some of part of the country does not feel more privileged than the other. For example, look at the unity school scores. Somebody in Zafara, a, a child in Zafara State who is 10 years old, and going seeking into admission into Unity, uh, Unity Secondary School is can score five over over three hundred or so. Uh, then somebody from Anambra State and Enugu State will not get that admission until it scores 200, 230 something. That that shows that we are not a nation. That is a divided uh, divided country because we are not giving everybody the same comparative advantage 
the same uh, uh, playground to play, no equity. So when you start doing things like that, then when you talk of recruitment into uh, the police and some other, the, the armed forces and some other places, you just find also there is a, a place of some people from the, one part of the country seems to dominate all. And so when you do that, the other parts of the country that are being manlined or marginalized will not feel the sense of nationhood because it's a nation is, it is that give every citizen the opportunity to excel without minding where you come from, where meritocracy is enthroned over nepotism. And mm -hmm. that is where you start building a nation. Anything short of that is no more a nation. And that is why a, a lot of Nigerians are disenchanted about this nationhood. And it's really that where we are just existing as a country because there's no sense of cohesion yet. But also, beyond that, over the years, we have been able to form bridges across different divides, uh, through intermarriages, mm -hmm. uh, through the NYSC has done a lot, for example, to ensure that the Nigeria from different parts of the country go to other parts of the country to learn one or two things. But basically, that is where it ends, because we need to have social and cultural, the social cultural integration, but there's also something that is wrong with the way we do our social policies in terms of favoring one part of the country to another. It's making the old people feel disenchanted. So, and then, the biggest fundamental problem with this country called Nigeria, while it is not a nation, is that we are not practicing fiscal federalism. Thank you what for bringing that, that up, because uh, that was uh, going to uh, be uh, my uh, next question. I was going to ask, that's because the issue of restructuring, like you said, when you talked about language, um, you know, we keep saying that, oh, we need a unifying language, but then the action to make that happen has not been resolute in any way. We've not shown any form of res resolution in that regard. So, so is the issue of restructuring. We've been talking about it. Every election cycle, it comes up. We throw it up there and we, you know, use it as some rhetoric. Why is it so difficult for us, including the politicians, to embrace the issue of restructuring and getting true federalism? Is it too much a nut to crack? Well, you, do, you don't expect the politicians to throw away uh, the things they are gaining. They, they, they stand to gain a lot from uh, this present system because, you know, where you go to Abuja, everything is centralized, command and control, power is controlled from there, the economy is controlled from there, allocation of resources is controlled from there, allocation and exploitation of mineral resources, they even allocate who to get what and who not to go how to exploit mineral and not how to exploit mineral. Who owns the oil well and who doesn't own the oil well? So there's so much power concentrated at the center. Therefore, they will not want to relinquish that power. So no, we don't expect the politicians to do that. It is the movement of the citizens, the demand of the citizens that will ensure that that happens. And if the citizens are docile about it, then the politicians will not be the ones to do it. Because they are humans, and we are also humans. Where you are getting from, you will not want to, you know, obtain the apple card. Therefore, what we need and what needs to be done is clear to everybody. Though we may not go back to the issue of region, but we can also do that because, for example, most of the states cannot pay salaries. Most of the states are not sustainable. They are not economically viable. They are just existing as they go to Abuja. Some of them don't contribute anything to the GDP. They don't contribute anything to the income of the country. But every month, they go to Abuja because some of them have what do they do? A nation that uses local government to give allocation, and then you go to some places, they don't, what they bring to GDP is almost 0%, and because they have 40, 40 local government, they, give more, they get more than the state that is giving more to the GDP that has 17 or 20 local government. Imagine a whole Lagos having 20 local government either with all the population, mm. and then a state somewhere is having for, that, for something. So it is that kind of uh, voodoo economics that is making us not be a nation. What we need to do is have the fiscal federalism, even the six geopolitical zones that can comfortably form six regions. And mm -hmm. no, if we want to go back to what we had between 1960 and 1966, but if we don't want to go back that, we can do what we call the way it is constituted. Let the states exploit the mineral, let some items from the exclusive list of the constitution be moved to the concurrence list. For example, the issue of mining licenses, the issue of uh, electricity. We are saying that the electricity, but the TCN, the federal government is still holding a grip on it. There mm. are obnoxious laws in the electricity sector that cannot, you know, that needs to be removed. Look at the issue of uh, refining of petroleum products. 
states are not even allowed, modular refiners are not allowed to start because of policies that are, you know, muzzling it from, despite the PID bill that has been signed uh, into law. Nothing is still happening there. But we are here constructing, uh, you know, pipelines to somewhere in the Nigerian Republic to import uh, fuel. So these mm -hmm. are the problems. And that is why a lot of uh, people don't see it as a nation. And so we are just a country existing and managing and patching up. So things car federalism, where the states pay tax to the center, has to be revived. And that is the only way you can actually say you are running a nation. Well, I want to say thank you. Ambrose Igboke is a public affairs analyst. Uh, thank you so much for succinctly putting um, that particular one to an end. Um, thank you so much once again. All right, thank you all for watching. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking with Serap and Einek because Serap is trying to sue Einek uh, for the 7 million voters who are yet to be registered for 2023. Stay with us.